Good morning, friends. Pastor Jesse here at Peckway Church of Whitehorse, welcoming you into the first of what I hope is many times in God's Word together. This is something new that uh, we're going to be trying here as we begin 2024, a new year. And with a new year, many Christians, many individuals decide that they want to make the decision to grow in God's Word, grow closer to God through His Word. Maybe reading through the Bible in a year, reading through a a scripture plan uh, and so I want to help in that I want to join in that and partner with you in that and I'm actually over the course of the next few weeks couple months however long it takes us uh, going to read with you uh, the Luke and Acts so the book of Luke the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts uh, in our New Testament and our Bibles are meant to be they were originally one uh, work the only reason they were separated is because of scroll length um, and so we're going to, over the course of the next few months, just read chapter by chapter, one a day, whenever I have uh, as many days as opportunity to record one of these, just read through chapter by chapter the book of Luke, and then when we get to the book of Acts. So we'll start with Luke chapter 1. I'm not going to be preaching in these. I'm just going to read them from the ESV, which is the book uh, or the version, the translation that I'm using this year personally to read through the Bible in a year. So I'm going to use the ESV version, the English Standard Version, and start in Luke chapter 1. After I'm done reading each chapter, I'll maybe just give one insight or, or one thing that stood out. But other than that, we're just going to be spending time in God's Word together, gathered around God's Word together, hoping that God, um, knowing that God will um, help us grow closer to Him through our time in His Word together. So Luke chapter 1, Luke begins in this way saying, inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those as who from the beginning were eyewitnesses in the ministries of the word have delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theopolis, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. And he begins, in the days of King Herod, of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both very righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside the house of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him and fell upon him in fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at your son's birth, for he will be great before the Lord. He must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled by their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went back to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. And for five months, she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among the people. But in the, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee, to a town named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, from the house of David. And he, the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. 
And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name his, call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him, to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will be without end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born to you will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth is in her old age, and she has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she explained with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed in the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is he who should believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Now we read Mary's song of praise. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their, in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those humble of state. He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zechariah after the fa his father. But his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives have this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted to, the child to be named. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he, Zechariah, blessed God. A fear came on all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea, and all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was clearly with him. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied this, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he has spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people and the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us on, from on high, to give light to those who sit in dark and in the shadow of the death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance in Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord, Luke chapter 1, a long, I think one of the longest chapters in all of scripture, 80 verses today. To dive in there, we covered a lot of ground from Luke's purpose for writing this historical narrative, this historical gospel, the word of God to the birth of John the Baptist predicted, the birth of Jesus predicted, and then the birth of John the Baptist come to fruition. And Mary and Zechariah's song of praise in there. And what always strikes me about this passage is how the angel Gabriel says to Zechariah, God has heard your prayer. And we talked about this in our Christmas series this year. Zachariah and Elizabeth were well advanced, well past the age of normal childbirth, yet the Lord says to them, God has heard your prayer. 
a prayer that they have likely not prayed for, for many, many years, for many, many moons. And it's a reminder to us that even if we are praying and God is not answering, at least in the way that we want God to answer, if God is not answering in the timing that we seek God to answer in, it is not does not mean that God does not hear our prayer and it does not mean that God will not answer our prayer, even our prayer in the way that, he does, that we desire him to answer our prayer. But we can take comfort in knowing that God is working, that God is answering our prayer and that God is good and that he will bring good things to those who seek him. So I implore you to continue to seek him. And one of the best ways that you continue, continue to seek him is through his word. And join with us as next time we will join dive into Luke chapter 2, the birth of Jesus that is coming and, and all that comes in, in Luke chapter 2. Until then, continue to seek God, continue to grow in his word, continue to pray, and may God continue to bless you in the rest of your days.